As you can see, I've got coolant pretty much just caked on the entire car. Here's a new tank here. This is a Mishimoto product. So we're upgrading to this. This is a, I believe it's called Euro Parts. We are going to replace it here with a racing thermostat. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Justin. And in today's video, we're going to be working on the E36 M3 with the expansion tank. So we had an issue a couple weeks back. I think you guys remember one of my videos where I was leaking some coolant. Uh, can you... I figured it was just the radiator cap or there must have been some air bubbles inside the system so I tried bleeding it. Unfortunately I tried doing that for like 30-45 minutes and it just kept still bubbling up. So let me show you what it looks like right now and I'll walk you through the process of what I did to determine that it was probably the expansion tank. As you can see, I've got coolant pretty much just caked on the entire car. I tried opening up the bleeder earlier this week and yeah, I mean, it just, the coolant pretty much just went everywhere. So long story short, what I ended up doing was I took some JB Weld and some gasket sealer and I tried putting it around the cap here um, in hopes that it was probably gonna cover up some sort of air leak or hairline crack, which is the stupidest idea that I ever did because that is just a temporary fix when in reality I actually really needed an expansion tank. So I actually found out that the car almost overheated on Friday. I was waiting in line at a fast food place and the needle started going a little higher and higher. So I turned the heater on, it cooled the car back off. But um, yeah, that was pretty much my green light telling me that you know we need to get this taken care of. So I tried bleeding the system um, over the weekend. They uh, left it on an incline to get all the air bubbles out. And then when I laid it flat down again uh, to uh, a level surface, it started to overheat. So I opened up the bleeder screw, coolant went all over the place, and it was just a big bad mess. So right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna drain out the rest of this coolant. I'm gonna pull this tank out. I'm gonna show you guys what it looked like when I JB welded it. And then I'll show you the new part that we're gonna be putting in. So, so let's go ahead and do that. So there's quite a bit of coolant left in here. Uh, what I'm gonna end up doing is just siphoning this out. I'm gonna save it because this is all actually brand new coolant. So let me get my little pump. We're gonna siphon this out, put it in a little jug, and then we'll be right back. So it's probably gonna spill over. Um, we still have a little bit in there, but Luckily, we're we're on the street here, so as long as it's not in my driveway, and don't worry, I'll I'll wipe it up. You're not supposed to leave shit like that out, so we'll take care of that. All right, here we go. So we finally got the expansion tank out. This is the old one here. Um, yeah, it's a pretty bad hack job. Learn from my mistakes. Um, I'm pretty sure there's probably hairline cracks somewhere here. <laughs> In hindsight, that was a really bad idea. I really shouldn't have done this. I don't know why I was trying to save a couple of dollars here, but essentially I also noticed that it was also leaking down here. Um, there has to be some kind of crack somewhere. I'm sure of it. Um, that's introducing air. And that's kind of what I'm hoping is going on is that um, I was pretty much trying to bleed the system and I was letting it bleed for like 30, 45 minutes on an incline and bubbles just kept coming up no matter how long I waited. So I capped it back all together, I put the car back on a level surface and then it started to overheat. I'm, I'm thinking what might have happened is that there's a hairline crack somewhere, it's introducing air to the system which is causing bubbles and plugs of air to get plugged up causing the engine to overheat. So I'm hoping with this new expansion tank, we can get that taken care of. Uh, so here's a new tank here. This is a Mishimoto product. Um, I've heard that Fitment is a hit or miss with these. So a lot, of the, a lot of the information that I read in regards to this actual expansion tank has been kind of hit or miss. Uh, some of the reviews on Amazon and even on the uh, E36 forums are saying that the Fitment might not be 100% perfect and that the Mishimoto expansion tank will play better with a matching Mishimoto radiator and fan shroud. So hopefully this doesn't give us too much fitment issues. 
Here is the tank itself. The actual box feels much heavier than the actual product. That's kind of funny. All right guys, so right off the get-go, here we'll do a quick side-by-side -side comparison here. So this is the plastic one that came out, and this is the new metal one that we're gonna be putting in. Um, wow, this looks very well put together. The welds on here look very good, very clean. I had a choice of either going silver or black, but I like the stealth look of this one. Um, yeah, this is all metal down here where that little nipple meets the radiator hose. So let me go ahead and get this fit into the car. I'm not gonna show you a walkthrough. I just wanna get this over with because I'm more curious to hope that the car doesn't overheat. Excuse all the background noise, guys. There's uh, my neighbors doing construction on their front yard. One other quick heads up. Be very wary whenever you order parts on Amazon. I know that sounds like a duh, but um, check this out. So. I went online and I tried to find a new coolant level sensor. I don't think there's anything wrong with mine, but I figured because I'm already taking out the expansion tank, I should probably order a new one. This is the old one that came out of the old expansion tank. As you can see, there's a prongs here. Here's a little bobber. Here's the new one. Uh, the only problem is the connectors are not the same. And according to this, it says coolant level sensor for BMW M3. And this is an E36 product that listed on Amazon's website. So um, it doesn't fit, 10 bucks. I'm just gonna go ahead and return it. Um, we'll clean off the old sensor, we'll be really gentle with it. But yeah, that's just a quick PSA on buying car products on Amazon. So fitment is not always 100%. But that's actually kind of funny that I mentioned that because I actually bought the expansion tank off of Amazon. So let's go ahead and uh, get this all cleaned up. We'll put it all together and then we'll go from there. All right, we got this all cleaned up. Going back inside. Sensor seems to line up well, so I'll go ahead and tighten this guy up. Okay, that seems to be on there quite tight. So let's see if we can put this back in the car. All right guys, so we finally got it all fit in. Um, this is what it looks like after. For anyone saying that there was a fitment issues, I can see where they were having a possibility of that being a problem. As you can see here, um, there's a plastic tab here. This, had, this actually does fit, guys. You just have to pull the tab up. I know some people were saying that they had to break this off and zip tie it, but to be honest, the only thing I have to zip tie is the actual fan shroud itself right here. But fitment wise, it doesn't look too bad. So let's fill this guy back up. I'm hoping that we got that all taken care of. I'm gonna clean it all up. That way we can identify if there's still leaks after this. So let's get to it. All right guys, it is a new day. Um, it's actually been a couple of days. Essentially, I installed the Mishimoto uh, expansion tank and I tried to bleed the system and it was a complete fail because the car still ended up overheating. As you can see, I made quite a mess of things. There was literally coolant everywhere because I allowed the, um, the bleeder screw to be open while the, wa uh, the water and the coolant was boiling. So what I ended up doing was taking out the thermostat housing and we're gonna go ahead and replace the thermostat. I'm hoping that fixes the problem. Otherwise, I think it might be the fan clutch or the water pump itself. So uh, I figured the thermostat probably wouldn't need to be replaced anyways. Uh, it's a really cheap fix and it was really easy to get to. Uh, some of these particular E36s are a little difficult because you have to pull out, I believe, the fan uh, blades as well as sometimes the radiator just to kind of squeeze in to get the housing out. Luckily for me, because of the supercharger setup, I'm actually using, I believe my, uh, my shop told me that this is a diesel fan. So I was able to kind of finagle my hand and my wrench in here to get these bolts out to get the thermostat housing. So let me show you what the old housing looks like, where the bolts were, and what we're replacing it with. Excuse the mess here. So essentially this was the plastic housing here. Um, I decided to purchase an aftermarket one that's made out of metal. I think that's gonna hold up better through time. It doesn't look like there's any cracks or anything. There's actually nothing wrong, it appears, on this. But I figured just for extra peace of mind, we might as well upgrade. And this is what we're upgrading to. So we're upgrading to this. This is a, I believe it's called Euro parts. <laughs> These parts actually aren't the best, highest quality amongst Euro brand uh, aftermarket parts. But I figured it's a thermostat housing. It's made out of metal. It surely, hopefully, isn't that bad, but 
we'll take a closer look at it. All right, guys, so right off the bat, looks like it's packaged pretty well. Um, we'll do a little side-by-side -side comparison to the plastic piece. So this is the metal one. Actually, it doesn't look that bad. This is what it looks like. It's actually not that bad. And the edges are actually smooth. I've seen pictures online of people saying that it doesn't fit or there's uh, rough edges around. It doesn't actually look too bad. So hopefully this fits in okay. So let me go ahead and get the new thermostat too. I'll, I'll show you what that new one looks like. Real quick, this was the old thermostat. I did, um, I did test this out in boiling water to see if it actually opened up. It did look like it opened up okay. Um, so yeah, I'm actually kind of bummed out. I was actually hoping that this thing wouldn't open up so we knew for sure it was a thermostat. But because it did open, I, I have a feeling that this might not fix the problem, but we're gonna keep this old part anyways, just in case this is the uh, standard one that was in the car. It doesn't look too bad. Uh, this opens up at, I believe, 88 degrees Celsius. We are gonna replace it here with a racing thermostat. Uh, I know a lot of people are gonna say that this is a, you know, a debatable subject to put a racing thermostat on a car that's potentially gonna be daily most of its life, or just you know taken out on the street. But this is a Mishimoto thermostat. I, it's a hit or miss. I've heard people say Mishimoto products are good. I've heard people say Mishimoto products are bad. So far with the expansion tank, I was quite impressed on the, the quality of it in terms of the fit and finish. So this is the uh, Mishimoto thermostat for the E36. This does open up earlier. Uh, it looks like 68 degrees that's stamped on here. So I don't know, maybe maybe this might actually help it. it this, this looks like it actually opens up a little easier than this which I don't know if that has to do with the temperature rating, but we're gonna go ahead and put the gasket on here, throw it onto the new housing, which is this little guy, and we'll go ahead and put it back in the car. Oh, and of course, the bolts is, there's four of them here, one, two, three, four, and I do have the old bolts that's laying in here. This is basically a bottle of vinegar, guys, and I just kind of laid the bolts in here. They've been soaking in here for the last two days. I'm gonna take them out uh, and hit it with a little bit of WD-40 and then rinse it off and uh, use a wire brush to get any of the rust off. Uh, that's essentially the reason why I did that. I just don't want these to be seizing and rusting inside of the car. So we'll go ahead and take care of that as well. Yeah, again, it is a new day. Um, so we did put the Mishimoto expansion tank, that's already in, and we did replace the thermostat housing as well as the thermostat. This is what it looks like. Right now, I left the thermostat cap off as well as the um, dipstick here for the coolant level. I had to do my own research on this. It's kind of hard to find information on the Mishimoto expansion tank to see how to properly bleed the system. So I'm kind of doing a combination of the stock tank where I'm leaving the cap off momentarily, waiting for the car to warm up to get those bubbles out. Once it starts getting warm, I'm gonna cap up the top, of the expansion tank, but leave that dipstick out to allow some of the air to still come out. Then we're gonna close it back up, button it up, and we're gonna take a look at the coolant level and also the temperature level, most importantly, to make sure to see if it's still overheating. When you're uh, bleeding the system out on these E36s, you do wanna crank your heat all the way up on high and make sure that it's uh, maxed out on the heat. And you're gonna wanna keep an eye on your temperature reading to make sure that you're actually not overheating while you're burping the system. So as we get closer to the middle of the gauge, I'm gonna give it a couple of revs. Now uh, you don't want your coolant to get too hot. Um, you have the coolant uh, blowing out of the expansion tank, which happened earlier uh, the last time I tried this. So uh, we'll make sure it doesn't get to that point. I hate to be abrupt, but it is a different day and we're currently in the house right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish off and tell you guys a story of exactly what happened after we did that procedure. So what ended up happening is after we tried to get those air bubbles out of the cooling system, letting the system burp, pretty much buttoned everything back up, took the car for a test drive, and it was still doing some sporadic overheating. Put on the throttle, 
the gauge would go out three fourths of the way of the water temp gauge. Then you let go, it would go back to the middle. And then there were strange times when it would do the opposite where idling would overheat and then driving would be fine. So I pretty much drove the car back home, let the car sit. I took the car to my mechanic shop the next day and I really thought that it was probably just gonna be the water pump. Turns out it wasn't. Uh, I dropped the car off and the next day I get a text from my mechanic. Unfortunately, he said that it could be a cracked head, a cracked block, or a head gasket. We're both hoping that it is just a head gasket, but it's it's very disheartening to hear that, especially if you're not prepared for that type of uh, diagnosis on your car. In hindsight, looking forward, I kind of already knew what I was getting into. And what I mean by that is when I first got the supercharger installed, the car had about 167,000 miles. I wasn't too sure of the history of the previous head gasket or the car. I've owned the car for the past six years, but I don't know what maintenance has been done prior to that. The previous owner didn't have any history on the vehicle. So for all we knew, we basically slapped on a 10 PSI supercharge setup on a stock head gasket. And and, um, you know, I already knew that I'm on bot time. I, I basically wanted to bolt it on, send it, and if it broke, it broke. And here we are. We're at that stage where something finally gave. So I can't really say I'm too surprised on that. Moving forward, I am keeping the car. Um, that topic has been brought up a couple of times in my head of whether or not I want to keep pursuing this. But I've put so much time and effort into the car that even though you know, it's disheartening to hear that this has happened. I'm so committed to the car at this point that I'm pretty much just gonna send it in terms of doing a rebuild. So the next step really is to have the head removed from uh, the block, inspect it. Hopefully it's not cracked. Hopefully the block is fine and that's not cracked. And maybe we can see exactly where that head gasket failed. Essentially, the diagnosis was that there was exhaust fumes going into the cooling system, which was causing the coolant inside of the radiator and in the expansion tank to boil, which would make sense because if there's exhaust gases going in there, there's continuous air bubbles happening and you're basically just blowing up your cooling system. The car currently has about 173,000 miles on it and the head's gonna be coming off. So for sure, I know for a fact we're gonna get the head rebuilt. I'm thinking about putting some cams in there, some uh, new valves, as well as some valve springs to go in there as well. I'm pretty much gonna fully build the head. Obviously, it's gonna be sent out to a machine shop as well, but the bottom end, uh, the block itself can remain in the car if we're just doing head gasket job, but at the same time, I'm also kind of tempted to actually just rebuild the block as well since since the head's already off um but if that's the case i think he has to actually drop the entire engine and, and get to that point so right now we're in the planning process of things um but moving forward we are keeping the car uh it's just a matter of what's going to get fixed what's going to get upgraded and what are the things we can do to it kind of in that rabbit hole as well is you open up the head and what other things can you find or fix or upgrade while you're in there? So it can get quite costly very quickly. Considering that this is my first rebuild on any type of engine, obviously I wanna do my research on it and uh, I wanna make sure I know what I'm getting into. Well, I wanna get the engine rebuilt to have it reliable, but I also wanna have the engine rebuilt in a way where it still allows me to expand in terms of power if I ever wanna go further into that rabbit hole. I will admit that I've already been looking at power upgrades. Cams are already a, a, a given that I wanted to do since day one. And because the head's gonna come off and the cams have to come off, now would be the perfect time to do that. I've been looking at smaller, or I'm sorry, larger crank pulleys to increase the PSI. If we're gonna be doing the head gasket, I might get a thicker head gasket to lower the compression so I can put more boost into it. So, um, yeah, I mean, the rabbit hole continues, guys. But anyways, I just wanted to give you guys an update. Um, unfortunately, this was the outcome of all of our efforts on the car as far as trying to troubleshoot the cooling. The E36 is gonna be MIA for, uh, MIA for a little while, guys. Um, but I'm not gonna let it um, hamper my spirits. So I'm gonna keep moving forward. We still have the Supra to build up. 
Um, I'm going to keep going to these car shows, try to pump out some of this content for everyone out there. So yeah, the journey continues guys. So stay tuned. So that's pretty much it guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, smash that like button for me guys. It really helps me out. And please, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Anyways guys, that's pretty much it. Remember, respect your elders. Peace.